Dr. Shadbolt, you said that you came as an immigrant to the United States to start your venture in quantum here because the United States was the best place for you to do that. Could you elaborate a little bit about why you think the United States is the best place for you to start this entity and why, what we need to do to make sure we continue to be a place where we will get, I think you said, the rare elite talent and why they should come to the United States? Yeah, so thank you for the question, Congresswoman. I mean, the, the United States, of course, has made a multi-decade uh, investment into uh, science and technology, uh, which means that uh, many of the best people in the world are here. The infrastructure is here. Uh, the um, willingness to go after these grand challenges uh, for humanity is here. And then, of course, uh, the industrial, you know, um, uh, a startup ecosystem, basically. We're a startup company, first and foremost. Uh, our uh, funding is overwhelmingly from private sources, and we knew when we started the company we would have to raise really significant capital for something that has never been done before. And um, to come and, uh, and do that uh, here was a tremendous opportunity for us. It was a no-brainer um, uh, when, we, when we first came here. Um, and that has been... Uh, reciprocated, I would say. You know, we, uh, as you've heard, are now spending hundreds of millions of dollars uh, on manufacturing here in the United States, and we've been delighted and uh, and um, gratified by the opportunities that we've enjoyed here in the United States. So, what do we need to do here in Congress to make sure that United States still continues to draw folks like yourself to come here and to think that this remains one of the best places to start and develop quantum technology? Uh, support the development of the best people, the best technology, and the best companies. So I'm going to leave this question open to anyone. Um, the domestic manufacturing of quantum computing chips opens the doors for a strong and competitive American workforce in quantum technologies for the future. So how can technology surrounding quantum, like, like the photonics or cryogenics, be effectively onshored or reshored to further bolster domestic manufacturing and create a strong American future in quantum? Yeah, so Congresswoman, I think we, it's very exciting to have an opportunity here to get off on the right foot uh, in something that is in the newer pieces of that ecosystem where with semiconductor manufacturing, I think it's fair to say we're kind of playing catch up uh, to um, remedy some of the risks that we see in our supply chain. Uh, so I think that's a, an extremely exciting opportunity with the new pieces. For instance, we've developed a new material that we make in California basically from scratch. That's really exciting. The, other, the only piece that I'd add to that is that I do think maturity has to be part of the discussion here. If we rebuild the entire supply chain from scratch, this is going to take a really long time. And so I think it's very important to look for opportunities where quantum computing <coughs> can make use of existing suppliers, existing infrastructure. And um, for instance, we use a big cryo plant, DOE cryo plant, at the Stanford Linear Accelerator, and we use uh, the Global Foundries Fab. The piece that makes that effective is that quantum computing is a frontier technology. We push the capabilities of those uh, partners. And as you've heard, we as a startup have invested hundreds of millions of dollars here in the United States to push the boundaries of what can be done with photonics, with cryogenics, uh, et cetera, packaging. Uh, and so just making people aware that that's actually a pretty exciting opportunity, I think is valuable. What would you say are the value of U.S. patents when our primary adversary in this specific sector does not uh, honor intellectual property protections? Do you believe U.S. quantum investments are being adequately protected through our current framework? And if not, what thoughts do you have to bolster protections for our quantum technology? As a founder of the company board member, I would be negligent if I didn't uh, publish patents as fast as humanly possible. And I'm fortunate to have a lawyer with a PhD in quantum computing who's been incredibly prolific in that respect. But to your question, in the end, the only thing that matters is winning and getting to the end as fast as humanly possible. And to the earlier question, that's what the United States has historically been uh, incredibly good at. <clears throat> I now recognize the uh, gentleman from Indiana, Mr. Baird. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member. I appreciate uh, our witnesses being here. Uh, the expertise you bring to this quantum uh, computing area is is tremendous, and the growth has been exponential. But anyway, Dr. Shadbold, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you know, I represent Northwest Indiana, and I'm proud that it's it's part of the quantum corridor. Uh, that links Indiana and Illinois, and as you know, the quantum corridor is developing the fastest and most secure fiber optic network in the United States. The hope is that the quantum industry embraces the opportunity to connect into this net network and, and expand upon that. So uh, I know that quantum communications is separate from the quantum computing, uh, but could you talk a little bit about the importance of this corridor and the connections that we're making there? Thank you, Congressman, for the question. Um, yeah, so uh, so this wafer in front of me, uh, this is a wafer of quantum chips, and this is a photonic wafer. So photons, uh, the same wavelength of light that's used in the internet for networking, can fly around on, this, on these chips. Uh, this is made in upstate New York. We make thousands of wafers like this right now, and we're really delighted to be bringing these wafers uh, in the near future to the Midwest, where we're building now large systems, as you've heard. And I think you've also heard from my colleagues, one of the, I think, exciting things about uh, this space is that it is an ecosystem. Uh, SciQuantum works uh, with 500 uh, supply chain partners in 39 states across the, uh, across the US. Um, and that's not just esoteric quantum research. That is cutting steel, uh, making wafers, and making the kind of advanced photonics that is critical for quantum networking, for quantum key distribution, for free space optics, uh, for photonic networking and AI supercomputers. And so I think it's actually very exciting that we can contribute to that, uh, that space and we can also benefit from work that is done by our colleagues uh, in, in optical networking. So when I took a tour, I think they started out with a four inch wafer Mm -hmm. which I didn't know anything about at the moment, but anyway, they started out with a four inch wafer, they went to um, an eight inch, and now they're up to an 18, which that looks like that's about what? Yes, yeah, so inches. Congressman, if you'll forgive me for uh, opening the case here, because my colleagues would like me to do this. Um, I, do, I do have a big wafer, which I'm happy about. Um, and, and, and this is not just uh, for fun, to your, to your point, one of the things that we've been most focused on in quantum computing is maturity. Uh, of course, quantum computing starts at a very low level of technical maturity in a research lab, and our emphasis has been to urgently escalate to a high level of technical maturity to be able to build the photonic components that you reference in a big fab in the millions, uh, and we're really excited to now be at that, that point. Now I'd like to recognize the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Harrigan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all of our witnesses today for your testimony. Really appreciate it. Very fascinating subject. And I come from the great state of North Carolina. We have a very robust agricultural sector. We make specialty crops such as sweet potatoes, tobacco, cotton. Can you guys talk more broadly and, and just explain in plain terms, what do these investments, these very sizable investments that we are making in quantum technology, what does it mean to folks in the agricultural sector more broadly? What, how, how are their businesses gonna be benefited? How are their lives gonna be changed moving forward? Depending on how organic your diet is, uh, it's possible that the majority of the nitrogen in your body right now was made in an industrial process to make nitrogen fertilizer the Haber, through the Haber-Bosch process. That's a piece of chemistry that was di discovered decades ago and that has allowed us to dramatically increase uh, the food production. Um, I, there's a reasonable case to be made that there are a billion people alive on planet Earth today who might not be here were it not for the Haber-Bosch process. That's a single piece of chemistry. Um, what we want to do with quantum computers is advance our mastery of chemistry, materials, uh, et cetera. And as far as the access to that, I want to emphasize, if you think about some of our biggest and most strategically important companies, TSMC, ASML, SpaceX, uh, NVIDIA, these are not technologies where the average person directly interacts with a satellite or a semiconductor fab or an AI supercomputer. 
but it is the second and third order byproducts of the calculations that are run on those systems or the capabilities that are enabled that do impact the everyday person. Dr. Uh, Shadbolt, DARPA is supporting several initiatives to move quantum sensing technologies from the lab into the field. Uh, what do you see as far as what we can do to help that actually become applicable? And what do you think the applications are gonna be as they move forward? Yeah, so Congressman, we were absolutely delighted to have graduated to the final phase of the DARPA Utility Scale Quantum Computing Program, now QBI. Um, and I would really strongly commend the approach that DARPA has taken to doing this, principally that that is an evaluation program. So what DARPA did in uh, pursuing this was to start from an assumption uh, that quantum computers are useless and that nobody knows how to build one. Mm and then to evaluate the claims of companies like ours uh, who were claiming that it's gonna be tremendously valuable and we do know how to build one and it's been extremely valuable to us to have been engaged with the ID and the government in that kind of red team mode of operation. I can't commend that enough as a robustifying, sanitizing uh, uh, effect. Dr. Shadbolt, you've got a, a great startup and you've talked about trying to source all your materials from the United States, and but I'd love to know, in your opinion, um, where you think we're most vulnerable when it comes to the supply chain of, of quantum. Uh, I know, and for what, I read a couple of times about cables being an issue, for instance. Um, what parts of the supply chain are there serious vulnerabilities? Yeah, so Congressman, we, I mentioned this earlier. We're actually in a quantum is uh, in a really quite unusually fortunate position for a hardware company where I think about 80% of our supply chain now is here in the United States. That's an extraordinarily large fraction, especially for an organization that's making chips. Uh, that was a deliberate uh, move by, by the company to establish that. Um, it is a very diverse supply chain from chips to PCBAs, as you mentioned, to fiber optics, cables, uh, et cetera. Our approach is to try to be realistic that it is not a good idea to completely build that thing from scratch. Our approach has been to architect the machine in such a way that we can fit ourselves into pre-existing high volume sub supply chains. And in doing so, basically save a ton of time and money. That's how we've gone about doing it. That's not always easy. Often we put these suppliers outside of their comfort zone with our requests, but we've been uh, very gratified actually by the success of those engagements with the big fabs, the packaging, the assembly, PCBAs, as you mentioned, um, and delighted to uh, give a more, more in-depth perspective on how we've done that, uh, if that's interesting uh, to the committee. Thank you, that, that's helpful.